Welcome to our house. Let's go on inside. Come on in. The first thing we have to do in this house is take our shoes off. So I invite you to take the shoes off wherever you are and be comfortable and come on in. So we're going to the kitchen. Please follow me. You know you're a good friend when I bring you into the refrigerator. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go in and to get something that can uh, do for a little bit of bread. I see there's one piece of crust that's, that's here. I don't need the whole thing, just ate lunch. But tear off a little piece for communion, set it aside, and some kind of juice. Oh, I know what you're thinking. No, this is called Hong Cho. It's a, a Korean uh, vinegar drink. Very healthy. So, at this time, I'd like you to go to your refrigerator. You can pull out a little piece of bread. I don't care if you put peanut butter and jelly on it. You can get some kind of juice or some appropriate uh, thing to use, food and drink, for the communion service that we're going to have. I'd like you to get those and have them ready. Hit pause now and go get them. And when you're ready, come back and resume the video. I'll see you in a couple of minutes. Bye now. Hallelujah. The Lord is risen. The, the Lord, Lord is, is risen, risen indeed. In Hallelujah.
says, I will make this covenant with the house of Israel. I will put my law within them, and I will write it upon their hearts. I will be their God, and they shall be my people. I will forgive the evil they do, and I will no longer remember their sin. So together we confess to Almighty God. Prayer of Confession. O oh God, we confess a faith that often denies you. You are our hope, yet we are often cynical. People still display their cruelty with nails of hatred, demonization, and blatant disregard for human life. Forgetting that you raised Jesus from the grave, we lose hope that you will raise us too. We have stood silently by while others suffer needlessly, sealed in lonely tombs of despair. Forgive, Forgive the coldness of our hearts. Give us courage to roll, roll away, away so that our lives may bear witness to your, your power, holiness, and in death. We pray in the strong name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Friends, this statement is completely reliable and should be universally accepted that Christ Jesus entered the world to rescue sinners. He personally bore our sins in his body on the cross that we might be dead to sin and to be alive to all that is good. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel that in Jesus Christ we have been forgiven. Amen. Please bow with me in the prayer of illumination. Almighty God, through your only Son, you overcame death and opened to us the light of eternity. Enlighten our minds and kindle our hearts with the presence of your Spirit, that we may hear your words of comfort and challenge in the reading of the Scriptures, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Old Testament lesson comes from 1 Samuel chapter 6, verses 13 to 15, and 19 to 21. Now the people of Beth Shemesh were harvesting their wheat in the valley, and when they looked up and saw the ark, they rejoiced at the sight. The cart came to the field of Joshua of Beth Shemesh, and there it stopped beside a large rock. The people chopped up the wood of the cart and sacrificed the cows as a burnt offering to the Lord. But God struck down some of the inhabitants of Beth Shemesh, putting 70 of them to death because they looked into the ark of the Lord. The people mourned because of the heavy blow the Lord had dealt them. And the people of Beth Shemesh asked, Who can stand in the presence of the Lord, this holy God? To whom will the ark go up from here? Then they sent messengers to the people of kiriath Jerim, saying, the Philistines have returned the Ark of the Lord. Come down and take it up to your town. This is the reading of the, of the Old Testament. Thanks be to the Lord. The Gospel according to Matthew chapter 28, verses 1 through 10. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord, descending from heaven, came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples he has been raised from the dead, and indeed he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. 
This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly, Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came to him, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Today we hear two stories of God's glory arising out of stories of God's defeat. In both stories, God appears defeated, first in the defeat of the Israelite army and the capture of the ark, and the second story is the crucifixion and death of Jesus. In both stories, God emancipates or frees God's self. Let's look at the Old Testament story first, because this story is the backdrop to Easter. After the ark is captured, God causes enough havoc to motivate the Philistines to send the ark back. If we read carefully, we see that God was in charge when the Philistines captured the Ark of the Covenant in the first place. God, Yahweh, was in charge of his people's crushing defeat, in charge of his own captivity, in charge of the Philistines and their god Dagon. God is too much for the Philistines, destroying their idol, sending tumors upon three Philistine cities, and directing the cows that haul the ark back to Beth Shemesh, God proves his power in a story that is grander than Exodus. God frees God's self, and God frees others. In today's reading, shortly after the ark returns, Yahweh slays 70 of his own people just for looking inside the ark. Just because the ark is back doesn't mean that the people own God. God will not be open to scrutiny, to second guessing. Have his people learned nothing? from their military disaster, as recorded in 1 Samuel 4. Some of the people want to look. They want the how. They want to see what he's got. Maybe they'd like to domesticate God's power. Uh, But God's power carries responsibility. 1 Samuel 6 shows there are consequences tied to our response to God's power. Now this story is the backdrop to Matthew's Easter story. As we affirm in the Apostles' Creed, he descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. Jesus' humanity is complete in his suffering like so many people do. Experiencing the worst that this world can do, he is completely cut off from God, as captured in his last words in Mark. Why have you forsaken me? With a loud cry, Jesus breathes his last and dies. Dead. Buried. Jesus is wounded and dies from the wounds of the nails and the cross, and the spear. And therein is the glory of God. Walter Brueggemann says there is woundedness in the glory of God. God's glory shines in God's woundedness. He was wounded for our iniquity. He was bruised for our transgressions. Apparently it's true. No guts, no glory. Jesus' resurrection from the dead would have paled in significance had he not suffered such a horrible and total death. 
God's glory can only be fully appreciated against this backdrop of total defeat. And whether that crushing defeat is a military disaster or the execution of an innocent person or the needless suffering due to the coronavirus and the resulting loss of health and financial security and life. God's glory has a way of becoming visible as God walks with us in our suffering. Even in the vast suffering caused by this pandemic, it's hard to see glory in the woundedness of this situation. God prevails in the end, and his people will rejoice. The ark comes back, and David dances in celebration of its return. Jesus rises from the dead. There is more to the suffering. We pride ourselves on being a compassionate people. We are taught to be compassionate by the church. That The value of that compassion is confirmed by the Spirit touching the lives of those we help and touching our own lives as well. But the compassion of public life has been torn by this pandemic, by people hoarding. Masses of people are dying in this pandemic, in prisons, detention facilities, in hospitals, and in homes. And in the midst of all this havoc, Easter shouts that God delivers. We will return from the exile of forced separation, from the exile of panicked buying, from an exile from the land of so much that is familiar. The ark came home, and David danced in the streets to celebrate. Jesus rose from the grave, and the disciples rejoiced, and so will we. There will, once again, be teepee and paper towels, but there will also be the warmth of human togetherness. There will be church services where we are physically present to each other. There will be funerals, and there will be weddings and fellowship dinners. There will be get-togethers for families and friends. We will return home from the land of fear to the land of God's compassion. It's hard to see glory in the woundedness of this pandemic, but that's how God's glory is visible. Mercy in the midst of suffering. God prevails in the end, and his people will rejoice. How else can God exercise power over death? When you're dead, you're supposed to stay dead, but that's not what happens. Before dawn, two of the women make their way to the tomb to embalm the body of Jesus. He's not there. He has been raised from the dead. The resurrection is about the power of God, God who emancipates himself emancipates us, frees us from all that is evil. Together we journey in the great company of all the saints into God's future toward the reign of God among all creation. Thanks be to God who gives us and all creation the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Now we come to a time of offering. If you are financially able, you can keep your offerings current during this pandemic by mailing them to the church at 202 North Franklin Street, Greensburg, Indiana, 47240, or by dropping them off in the mail slot at the entrance on Washington Street. We'd also like you to consider the special offering of the Presbyterian Church called One Great Hour of Sharing. The three programs supported by One Great Hour of Sharing Presbyterian Disaster Assistance, 
the Presbyterian Hunger Program, and self-development of people. All work in different ways to serve individuals and communities in need. From initial disaster response to ongoing community development, their work fits together to provide people at, with safety, sustenance, and hope. If you'd like to participate in this special offering, just make a note on the memo line of your check. Now let us bow together in prayer as we dedicate these offerings. We are an Easter people. We believe that faith can move mountains. We trust that with your grace present, even the smallest act of kindness, the shortest practice of goodness, or the slightest gesture of generosity can have significance well beyond all expectations. With that faith, we rise. With that faith, we are resurrected into new life. With that faith, we give freely and joyfully. And so now we give out of what we have to bless those who have not in order to bear witness to and to inspire a spirit of resurrection in ourselves and in others. In the name of our risen Christ, amen. This is the Lord's table, and it is open to all whom the Lord invites. You need not be a member of this congregation here to receive communion. If you simply seek to follow Jesus and find fellowship in him, you are welcome. And now, if you have not already procured your juice and bread, you can press pause now, go and get them, bring them to your computer, and when you're ready, press resume, and the service will continue so that you can actively participate in the Lord's Supper wherever you are. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks, give our thanks and praise. Creator of heaven and earth, we praise you. You commanded light to shine out of darkness, created sea and dry land, ordered the vast universe, and called it all good. You made us in your image so that we can live with one another in mutual faith. You breathed into us the breath of life and gave us freedom to choose your way. From eternity, you have been faithful to your word. Almighty God, we are in awe of your ways. You sent your only son, Jesus, who died on a cross that we might live. By your power, he overcame death and rules the world from your right hand. We know that he will overcome everything that hurts or divides us. Together. Holy, 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 holy Lord. Lord. God, God has might. Might. heaven and earth, earth are full of your glory. Lord. Those God God in the highest. highest. Blessed, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. The Lord Jesus, on the night before he died, took bread, gave thanks to God, broke it, he said that the bread symbolizes the church, which is broken for the world. Take and eat that which is given, remembering me. Together. In the same way, he took the cup, 
saying, this cup is the symbol of my new covenant with you, which is sealed in my blood that is shed for you. Share this cup, remembering me, the gifts of God for the people of God. Every time we eat this bread and share this cup, we announce our belief that Christ has died and was resurrected for our salvation unto the fullness of time. my soul and all, and all that is within, within me bless, bless god's holy name bless the lord oh my soul and forget forget all, all god's, god's benefits. benefits loving god we thank you you, you have fed us in this sacrament united, united us with christ, christ. And give us a foretaste of the heavenly bank in our eternal, eternal kingdom. Send us out power of your in the power of your spirit to live and work your praise, praise in the Lord. For the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
and Name Grace, Mercy, and Peace from God the Creator, God the Redeemer, and God the Sustainer be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Oh,